Welcome to the fascinating world of the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, affectionately known as the Little Monaco. This is a replay of the Atlantic Race 1993. Every young Canadian dreams of being the next great champion. To join the list of Canadian racers of being maybe a Goodyear, maybe a Tracy, maybe even a Villeneuve. However, for one young Canadian, being the next Villeneuve isn't a dream, it is a reality. Jacques Villeneuve is the 22-year-old son of Formula One star Gilles, the nephew of Indy winner Jacques. And in 1993, his first season of Players Limited, Toyota Atlantic, Jacques has managed to score two wins, three pole positions, and he sits in first place in points. Now today, Jacques comes home with an opportunity to add another chapter to the Villeneuve legend by being the second generation of his family to capture a win in the streets of Trois-Rivières. Rookie sensation, Jacques Villeneuve. Five-time winner, Claude Bourbonnet. IndyCar winner, Jacques Villeneuve. Today, they all hit the streets of Trois-Rivières for the annual Battle of Quebec. Thousands of fans pack into North America's oldest street race to see who will be the king of Quebec. And this year features a battle of epic proportions. Claude Bourbonnet, the series points leader, no career Atlantic wins in his home province. And Claude has been challenged in the local papers by Canada's first IndyCar winner, Jacques Villeneuve. The three-time winner here annually drives this event to prove that he is still the best of Quebec. While his nephew, Jacques, captured the pole and in his rookie season is looking to be the third Villeneuve to taste a win in Trois-Rivières today. 19 drivers hope to add their names to the list of champions. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to TSN's coverage of Round 10, Players Limited, Toyota Atlantic Series from the streets of Trois-Rivières. A sellout crowd on hand to witness what they are calling the Battle of Quebec. And to Canadian race fans, Trois-Rivières is best known as the place where a young Gilles Villeneuve beat the likes of James Hunt and K.K. Rosberg to launch his Formula One career. And that kind of magic is still alive today as the fans come to watch Gilles' son and his brother battle for a win in 93. But Trois-Rivières is more than simply a race. It is an event. And with more, my colleague, Bill Adam. Well, you're absolutely right, Vic. This is like Monaco in Formula One or the Indy 500 for IndyCar racing. This is the event in the Atlantic Series. And the race fans here are very, very special. They come by the thousands to enjoy their passion, motor racing. They come to see the cars, the teams, the drivers, and they bring their children and take them through the paddock area to teach them all about racing, to teach them the legend of Trois-Rivières. In short, this is the event of Canadian motor racing. The weekend actually begins on Thursday with the pit stop competition. They invite the Atlantic drivers and teams to downtown Trois-Rivières to pit their skills against the clock and determine who is the fastest team in the pit lane. This year's battle came down to the three Quebec drivers, Villeneuve, Villeneuve and Bourbonnet, and the fans loved it. The eventual winner, of course, young Jacques Villeneuve. Practice and qualifying begins on Friday, and for the real race fan, this weekend is nothing short of spectacular. The races include Formula 1600, Formula 2000, the World Challenge, and of course, the two biggies that everyone comes to see, the Trans Am and the Atlantic. And the fans come here by the thousands to become part of the racing community. In fact, many Canadian drivers that entered here this weekend were inspired by this event to become a racing driver. They understand the magic of this event. Every Canadian driver who, who grew up in the uh, 70s and 80s uh, Gilles Villeneuve is your your idol, certainly mine, um, and and not just not just uh, the Villeneuve, but also the the atmosphere uh, in Trois Rivières. It's it's, it's it's really indescribable. And with all the hype and celebration of racing here this weekend, that actually inspires the drivers. They drive harder and go faster, and will go to almost any length to give those fans the excitement that they came here to enjoy. And one of those fans is the third member of our broadcast team. That's Larry Newber. As the pit reporter, my job has always been to report from the heartbeat of the action. But here at Trois-Rivières, North America's oldest road race, this is really the heartbeat of where it's at, the fans in the stands. Because of the geography, the location, and a tremendous 
heritage of this racetrack, dating all the way back to the great Gilles Villeneuve, Kiki Roseburg battles, this has always been a fan's event. Now this weekend, everything has simply been punctuated by the darling of the crowd, young Jacques Villeneuve. He sits on the pole. And on the outside of the front row, perhaps the biggest surprise of the 1993 Formula Atlantic season, a brand new chassis with roots in Cleveland, Ohio, driven by New Zealander Steve Cameron. He's second fastest. And then row two lines up David Empringham and Claude Bourbonnet, the favorites. And remember, at the end of every race this year, when Claude's been on the racetrack, he has been flagged the race winner. So everybody's up front, brand new chassis. Both Villeneuve's are in this race, and Claude is still undefeated. Yep, this could be very good. The Players Limited Toyota Atlantic Championship is brought to you in part by Yokohama Performance Radio. Now, you've got control. The year is 1990 and Jacques Villeneuve returns to his home track of Trois de Vier looking for another Atlantic win. Starting on the second row, Jacques doesn't waste any time, passing at every opportunity. Sometimes when there was no room, he went on to win his third race here in Quebec, here at home in Trois de Vier. Outside of row one, he's back. Steve Cameron in the brand new Raven. Cameron from Sonoma, California was second in last year's championship. Inside row two, David Empringham from Toronto, Ontario failed to start a week ago in New Hampshire and he is now third in points. Outside row two, the co-leader, Claude Bourbonnet. He has five wins this season. Claude Bourbonnet always a factor in every race. Inside row three, Number 15, Peter Facetta from New York City, started on the front row in New Hampshire. And a newcomer to the series is outside row three from France, the Formula 3 driver, Patrick Le Marais, in his first Atlantic race. Inside row four in the 05, 
He was fifth in New Hampshire. This is the veteran. This is Bert Hart. And outside row five from Dallas, Texas. His best of the season was seventh in Montreal, and that's Charlie Nearbird. As we run down the rest of the 19 cars in this starting grid, there you see Jacques Villeneuve Sr., the uncle of Junior. The brother of Gilles has won here three times. Trevor Siebert from Langley, B.C. Kenny Wilden is back. Greg Putin's a Canadian from Quebec. Colin Truman is a former Rookie of the Year in the series. Bobby Carvel in the second Raven. Bernard Schuchman is a native of Montreal, but now lives in Dallas, Texas. This is his first Atlantic race. And Walter Kohler from Toronto makes his second Atlantic start. And we will be riding on board with Claude Bourbonnet as he tries to chase down his teammate, the pole sitter, Jacques Villeneuve, here in Trois-Rivières. started on the front row and everyone was quite surprised about oh. how well he did in qualifying and now he doesn't make his first warm-up lap unbelievable well we have seen some remarkable first laps this year going back to montreal with kenny weldon rear-ended code bourbon the first lap at uh, new hampshire the one with david everingham's car broke trying to leave the grid and now on the first lap this brand new raven car steve cameron finished second in last year's championship had really gone into a retirement and he told you that one of the reasons he came out of it was to drive his raven yeah it was, it was one of those uh dream come true situations where he got the phone call from the people said we want you to do some testing on this car and so the testing went so well that they decided to enter in the competition it was not in their original plans to bring the car out this quickly but sometimes these miraculous things happen they design cars to work and lo and behold they do work all too often it doesn't go that way. There's a flag showing slippery surfaces right there. You can see the flagger as he points it out. He's warning all the drivers that maybe someone has laid down a trail of antifreeze or oil. So please be careful, fellas. And Steve Cameron now is out of his Raven, and his afternoon is done before it even begins. So major disappointment for the 33-year-old from Sonoma, California. Yeah, New Zealander that now makes his home in California. Had a nice chat about New Zealand because it, it's a country that I fell very much in love with a few years ago. I had a chance to visit it. Had a good chat with Steve. I'm very sorry to see him out of the race. So the spot alongside Jack Villeneuve Jr. will be open as the cars now come to a stop. And this will open it up for yeah. Claude Bourbonnet to make a run right up that inside. <laughs> I was going to say, here we go again. This, this is Don Garland who can turn corners. We have not seen anybody challenge Claude Bourbonnet this year. And lo and behold, now he's got the luxury of clear track in front of him. He doesn't even have to swerve around camera. So on the right is your pole sitter. That is Jacques Villeneuve Jr. And on the left is the second player's car, his teammate, Claude Bourbonnet. And the spot in front was where Steve Cameron was supposed to be. Yeah. 
and watch the lights. We're going to see. There's the white flag at the back. It signals everything is clear. They're ready to go. 50 laps here in Trois Rivières, and there is the green light. They're off. And look at Bourbonnet once again. Look at this fabulous start. Oh, he is at, unbelievable. Look at Villeneuve. Villeneuve. They Bourbonnet. both made mistakes. And every and every two. Two. All three of them. Your three front runners are in trouble. Look, and look at Bourbonnet. Bourbonnet Come on, push me back. Push frantically me back. telling the marshals that naturally we're in Quebec. They're going to push him back first. Ambringham, I think, has damaged both front wins. Oh, and he's in the wall as well. Torn the wheel. Bernhardt. Bernhardt has gone into the wall on the very first lap. And your leader is Peter Bossetta. Bedlam on this opening lap. They have not waited for tires to get hot. This shows the pressure, the tremendous prestige associated with the Grand Prix de trois Rivière as David Embringham rejoins. Now with luck, I think what is going to happen here is we will require a pace car to come out on the track. This may give David and the two players' cars at least a chance to catch back up. Peter Bosetta is your leader. Another newcomer, Patrick Lamare from France, Formula 3000 driver in his first Atlantic race, is in second place. Just unbelievable happenings on this opening lap. Our field, look at everybody sliding out of the corner. Nobody's getting traction. Kenny Wilson up safely through there. Breaking back down into turn one. This is where all the action took place before. Both of the leading cars are safely through. A replay of one point. Off to the left, you can see Claude Gobernet. One of his patented brilliant starts. Just the right amount of wheel spin. David Ambringham tries to come up the other side of Young Villeneuve, and at this point, all of them make major mistakes. They're going way too deep. David, too, is carrying far too much speed in. Watch Ambringham's Canadian car. The whole master car hits the wall, probably bending that right front wing to a position where it will be useless from now on. And there was also a problem at the back of the field. Oh, did you see Fonseca just barely raise the wall as he came around the corner. Now Patrick and look at you're going to see yellow flags all the way around. I think this is going to be a pace car situation. And take a look who is in third place. Oh, as Fossetta locks it up in third place is Jacques Villeneuve, senior. This, this is more like watching driving school than it is watching professional race. Just endless mistakes as the pace car does join the track. There you're going to see the formation. Everybody will close up take formation behind the pace car, and they will have to get this wreck off the track. Bernhardt, the 27-year-old from Boca Raton, Florida, in his Simpson safety Rolf, as he dueled with Fossetta. And watch and see what happens. As they go into the corner, look how much speed he is carrying in. Cannot hold the slide as he hits the tire. The tires stay in place as they're supposed to, and rips the wheel right off the axle. So Bird Hart, who was fifth in New Hampshire a week ago, is out of this race early. Hart has won more than $50,000 this year in the Players Limited Toyota Atlantic Championship Series. And Bird is almost at home, but the pink flamingo outside the guardrail has nothing to do with his hope. So a dramatic start. We have our top three contenders Villeneuve Jr., Bourbonnet, and Empringham all missing the first turn, and now Bernhardt crashing. Here's Larry. We apologize. We'll try and fix our hookup with Larry Newber as we ride along with Claude Bourbonnet. But you see, maybe it's the pressure of this place. I like it. I agree 100%. I think it is the pressure for all of these fellas, for both Jacques and young Jack Villeneuve, as well as Claude Rubinet. This is, I don't know, it, it's akin to uh, trying to win the World Series in one game for the Blue Jays back in Toronto. There, there is nothing that can accurately describe the pressure of racing in front of here. To, to win here, you're king of Quebec. You own the city, you own the province. Let's remember, as we pointed out, Jill Villeneuve has won here. It's under the yellow. Here comes David Embringham, and it looks like they'll change that front wing if they can. Yes, they'll put a complete new nose on it. You can see they're, they're trying to do this as quickly as possible. An excellent idea. I think this is a very smart gamble on their point. They're going to work as fast as they can, 
take this off, get something new on in place. He can rejoin at the back of the pack. He was already at the back, so he effectively does not lose a thing. The only thing he has to worry about now is getting lapped by the pace car as he sits motionless in the pits. But I think if he's careful, he can go back out, do a lap, if necessary, duck back in to get the pieces put on because that the removal of Bernhardt's car is going to take a few laps. This is wise on the part of the crew chief. Now remember, he's had three seconds, four thirds, hasn't won, and up until New Hampshire a week ago, he was the points leader. But then he had a clutch problem on the starting grid, and for the first time, David Emperingham and his Moto Master Ralph was not, he was not a factor. The danger here that will exist for David is to rejoin the race and try and get back into the rhythm of the, uh, the cold, isolated viewpoint that you have to attain as a racing driver to do very well. He cannot be emotional. And it's interesting, as you look at the race story, Jack Bullard had the lap record set it a year ago. Well, 15 different cars beat that record or beat the qualifying record in this year's race. So everybody going a lot quicker here in Poirier. They have been flying through qualifying here. We're under yellow, and we're just a couple of laps into this race. We're trying to do 50. Oh, my. What can we expect when we come back? Players Limited Toyota Atlantic Championship on TSN. Welcome back to Trois Rivieres, and we're still under yellow. Peter Bossetta continues to lead, followed by the Frenchman, the rookie, Patrick Lamare, Jacques Villeneuve Sr. looking for his fourth win here. Nemo Scattarella as we look in pit lane, and David Embringham builds it exactly what you thought. He went quickly around. Yeah, I think this is accomplishing two things. He was able to get all of the work done in the car within the specified time before allowing himself to get lapped in the pits. Just before the pace car came around, drove frantically out of the pits, made a quick lap, did a real fast lap. So his tires are in very good condition right now. He has a little bit of confidence back in the car. All of a sudden, he knows he can go quickly again. He knows how it feels. And I think it reestablishes the mindset necessary to get past that first corner incident. I think it's a bit excellent movement, a good call on his crew chief and on David's part. Carbonet running in 15th place right now. Embringham is in 60. I mean, you have contenders down near the bottom. Yeah, do you think that's going to be fun? Yeah, exactly. Watching them climb oh, up. Oh, boy. We're going to get a... We knew we were going to get a great battle here today just because of where we are and what is involved. And Jack Villeneuve Jr. is currently in 13th position as the field starts to string out. Here's a replay once again. Claude Bourbonnet up the inside on dusty pavement. No possibility of stopping at all. Jack Villeneuve cannot turn in because Claude beside him. David Everingham carried equal speed in. It's very difficult to back off when you see two people flying by. Sometimes one person will say, well, they're wrong. Two people, then you tend to think you're the one who's wrong. So David went for the bait.
but not a shot. So oh, he almost hits the top. He nearly gone under Lamaré from France, and Bassetta was getting one. Now, listen, we should point out that, in fact, the race was delayed slightly because the Trans Am cars had been out before and had torn up the pavement a little bit. Do you think that that's why the cars are just a little bit swirling up? No, I think it's a, it's a case of not warming up tires properly. Diving up the inside, I think he's got second place, Vic. He does, he gets by Patrick Lavare from France and Jack Villeneuve, who in the papers was criticizing people such as Bourbonnais saying, look at you have to beat the big guy first, considering himself to be the king of Quebec road racing. And Jeff Parker with a nice move. Look at Lavare try the outside. Fighting right back. And Parker can hold him off. Just took a look to see if it might be possible and thought better off about no, buy your time. But look, we're on board, Do you think he's inspired? Oh, look at this, Jacques Villeneuve. His why, and Jacques Villeneuve Sr., who has won here three times, and now, at the age of 38, looks to win his fourth. He's your new leader well, here. Look at the people in the air. Look at the crowd. You can see them clap. You can hear them cheer. They get so emotional here. And this man, look at this. This man is a legend in this place. Unbelievable. And let's not forget, people talk about IndyCar racing today, Paul Tracy and Scott Goodyear, but before they won their races, this man was the first Canadian to ever win an IndyCar race, and that was an Elkhart Lake. Well, Jacques Villeneuve is a man who drives with a switch. He doesn't need a throttle. It's either on the floor or under hard braking. There is no in-between stop or job. And that is the biggest criticism of him as we look back through the field. Now there is the center raven. That's Bobby Carvel. And young Jack. And Jack trying to go inside on Paul and Truman. And Truman closes the door. No possibility of that move at all. Jack was very wise at backing up. You can see there is Jack right behind Paul Bourbonnet, right behind David Emmerich. The three points leaders are nose to tail. They are all right there.
Bonsetta is into the wall at turn one. And Bonsetta loses it. And now is looking for some kind of a push to get himself restarted. He has stalled the car, obviously. He's requesting the flaggers to please pull him off the track. Let him bump start that car. Put it into gear. Pop the clutch out. Get it rolling again. Peter Bonsetta. The 27-year-old from New York City. A replay of what happened. Watch as he starts to turn in. There's a car alongside him already. It looked like he may have made contact with yes. that left front tire of the big Lemarea brand. That's, that's exactly what he did, Vic. His right rear and the left front of the other car made contact with him. Just enough to put him sideways a little bit. But there is your leader, Jacques Villeneuve Sr. Trying to prove that he still is. King of Quebec at the age of 38. All of the young kids in town still have to beat the master. Well, I think what John better do at this point is to stretch as much of a lead as possible because it is not going to be very long. Look at this. What a battle here between Paul Bouvier and David Emery. Side by side down the street. Paul Bouvier is inspired at this point. And Paul Bouvier in the turn one. Brilliant move there. Just a wisp of smoke off the right front tires. Hard braking alongside David Emery and pulled in turn one. Max Cavillier, now he's going to set his sights on his own teammate. And I think young Jack is going to be a victim very short. I tell you what, though, I'm impressed by that 78. That's Bobby Carvel. That's the race. He hasn't given up his place that age. This is impressive for a brand new car. On board with Claude Wolfenay again. As he gets out of this corner, he's going to power down as early as possible. A little bit of wheel spin there. Down the long straight again, the cars are evenly mapped. Toyota engine, very, very consistent, very even horse car to run. Jack gets by Carvel and the Raven, and now Borbonet did it outside. Did he crack the wall? Did he touch the wall a bit? I don't think so. He was very close, but his quick reaction saved him on that one. Here we go. Now he's going to try and do the same thing as he did last lap. Outbreak and going into turn one. See if he can grab him and duck down to the inside at the last minute. Yes, there he goes. He's not alongside yet. Oh, Harville didn't give it to him. And they fishtail, they snake around through turn one. Oh, Harville is putting up a much tougher fight than I thought he could. Bourbonnet now dives to the inside. Oh, he's got him this time. And Harville straight off. He didn't try and make the corner, realized that at that point he was totally committed, did not want to hit the wall, chose to go off, and maybe he'll get pushed back out of the course to rejoin the race. So the Ravens are now gone, and it remains Villeneuve, senior leading, and Villeneuve Jr., Corbinet, and Empringham, playing catch -up. I think we will see Carter rejoin. I believe he just went down the escape road. There he is. Yes, he is. He's going to be able to come back out here. He has safely turned around. You see the flagger is just helping, guiding him a little bit, taking his time. Well, he wants to stay away from those tires as well. It's like a parking lesson. Well, I'm not sure what they're doing back there. All these drivers want to win here. Oh my, as he puts it into a four-wheel drift.
Here's a man, he gets in a car once a year, twice a year maximum. And yet, when he gets back to Three Rivers, it's as if he has never stepped out. Here's Larry. Well, Barry Green has been standing by watching his drivers uh, try to keep turning off face to bottom. And so far, it's worked pretty well. Barry, have you heard much from either Claude or Jeff out of the horse?
slowed, did a perfect pass on it. He got up alongside. Once you're equal to another driver, then the corner is yours. And Claude Morbidet with the help of some track side and workers looking still to get back into this race. This is letting us see the importance of, of the ever important single point. If he can get one, two, five points, anything from this race, he wants it because they're all tied up in the championship. Young Jack is not a happy man today, but I, I think when he watches the replay of this incident, he will understand that no, I'm afraid that was his own fault. So one Villeneuve remains, and that is your leader. That is Jack Villeneuve Sr. Jeff Barker currently running in second place, and David M. Freeham is now in third. Well, it shows the, the importance of consistency and, and just staying power. Jeff Barker, as an example, started this race in 16th place. Normally, you'd think out of reach, can't possibly do anything good. And yet, second place. This, should it continue, will be his best race of the year. He is easily within striking distance of John Barker. That's him right there. He is only just a fraction behind him. As they continue to try and work and get Claude Bourbonnet out. I don't know. I, the, the suspension. The tie rods, were they not bent? Well, they are bent. You, you're going to see that the wheels are actually what they call toe-in. They are facing each other. Not neat. Larry. Bourbonnet's coming in. Bourbonnet has gone straight through down to the Duplessis arch. He cannot even complete a lap. He has gone off the track. He will not finish this lap. Our camera's searching for him. his car and his car joins the Raven which of Steve Cameron which went out before the race down at that end of that short shoot leading up to the back straight at the Duplessis Arch. Ah oh, gee th this is just unbelievable. Peter Fossetta who was leading this race now has dropped back as well remember he spun at turn one and stalled he's currently running in 11th spot hey, and about to be lapped by Jacques Villeneuve Senior. Yeah, you can see Fosetta just glance in the mirror right there. He, he sees there's another car close to his tail. You can see that Jacques Villeneuve actually is being quite cautious at this point. Normally, he may have took a stab up the inside to see if he could outbreak him. Took his time, and now he's cleanly passing on the street. All right, let's go down to Larry. Tough, tough times down here in the pits. Uh, first of all, about the incident involving both cars, Barry. Did you see it at all? Could you make any judgment call? Well, obviously we saw it, Larry, right in front of us. Uh, judgment call, well, they both my cars, I know that. They were both blue and white. Uh, uh, I, I gotta go back and really uh, have a look at the tape, I guess, but uh, I don't think it was a very smart move. Uh, applaud spot. Uh, we've been kept, uh, kept trying to judge them, take it easy, because we had a long way to go in the race, and I believe we're still well in touch with uh, the leaders. Uh, so, uh, obviously, we're very upset. We have this race, it's a great race. Do you think the problem started way back on that one? Yes, and exactly what happened there, I don't know. You know, the track is a little slippery on the inside. Uh, but what I, what I heard, uh, uh, Claude uh, touched uh, uh, the track and uh, set him straight off the escape road. But uh, whose fault that was, I don't know. That certainly hurt us. Any time they got to come through the field like that, they were doing a great job. Uh, David was being, you know, in the same backup as we were. So we were looking good as far as the championships. Uh, By the way, we really appreciate your courtesies. It's a very busy man right now. On the radio, do you both say what his problem was? What knocked him out of the race eventually? Uh, no. Never heard from him. Uh, no. So, a team manager who, at first appearance, first glance, doesn't like the move by float inside. And yes, again, you know, you try to rein in. It's the rain in the driver and tell them that, you know, hey, there is a long way to go. Yeah, you really do. It, it is the, uh, an important job of the team manager to try and keep the drivers in control and give them the benefit of his experience. From Barry's standpoint, what he watched were the two cars coming towards him. I'm sure at the last minute he saw Claude diving in the inside, brakes locking up into his contact. So 
he may feel at this point that it is Coach fault. Again, I stress, that is not Coach Bourbonnet's fault. I don't think he did anything wrong. That would have been a good pass had Villeneuve simply looked beside him. David Imperingham walked up the brakes as he's trying to close the ground now on Jeff Parker in the number 19, currently in second place. And running up alone in first and comfortably is Jack Villeneuve Sr. Well, this may change David's plans a little bit. I think he maybe wants to kick off Parker, who is right ahead of him. And the locking brake, I don't think, signified any sort of a problem. Perhaps the wheel went on to uh, a section of painted pavement, a little oil slick. It could have been anything like that. Normally, the right you get consistent smoke off a wheel, there isn't a problem. That was just one isolated incident. He does have a long way to go, as we can see here, 25 laps. He can take his time and pick them off. You know, as we reach the halfway point of this 50-lap race, you mentioned Halifax and how this circuit isn't quite as bumpy as Halifax, but in many ways it's tight. Yes, one it is. of his best finishes for Parker was fourth in Halifax. That's right. And again, he kept the car going.
of Formula Atlantic Race 1 with a pit stop. How about two pit stops? Kevin Baltimore and crew, you know, I heard there's an opening with the head of the stock car line. You ready to go? Uh, we're quite happy where we are with, with this series. This is uh, a pretty unusual race, but it uh, looks like we're going to come out of it all right. Kevin, those were terrific pit stops. Had you guys ever planned anything like that before? It just was all, all off the cuff and impromptu. But we have the spare pieces ready, but we don't practice that or anything like that. You know, we were just glad to be able to get it done and get it back up to the to the pace car in time. I think David, as to how far behind he is and how many laps to go and sort of recommending him a pace. Well, no, actually, the, when we changed the, the nose, we lost our pit board. Our pit board is our only means of it's Trois Rivières, where history is very important, and look how we're communicating the old-fashioned way, the good old pit board. Well, Larry, we can tell you that on his last lap, lap 29, Entringham picked up about half a second, and his now down to 8.58 seconds. That's how much he's behind Jack Villeneuve Sr. And David is trying hard. You can see that he is using up most of the track. The car just kind of dancing across the pavement. This is good for David. I, I think he was brilliant all through practice and qualifying. He was very, very impressive. And we were able to stand at the wall and watch him as going through that corner, particularly the first turn. David, I think, showed more aggression than I have seen him show this year. I think you can tell him maybe the, uh, the disaster of the last race with that break is really is telling him, he said, okay, I can't just sit back and play the waiting game. Now I have to force it, and it showed. He was incredible. Senior getting by Charlie Nierberg. Charlie Nierberg also having a very good weekend here. He has been very, very quick as well. He's currently running in 10th position, but now lap and trailing down a lap to the leader, Jack Villeneuve Senior. Look at that four wheel trip. You think it was dirt? Yeah, I tried that. For Jacques. If he could get three rivers changed over to a dirt track, oh, oh. bring the skidoo out here and run that as a formula pilot. Smooth power slides out of all the corners. Charlie Nierberg alongside. Charlie ran very well here last year. He had an incident at the end of the race that was a bit upsetting to him where he, he damaged the car. But for most of last year, he ran in the top five. Uh, he must like street circuits. Can he will this like 50 car? Can he also have a good run? He is up to sixth place right now. Trevor Siebert in the 0-9. Dynamax. Swift running in fifth. Couple of Canadians. Kenny Wilden, former players, GM champion. Running four to five races. The Canadian events mainly also ran in Atlanta, looking to make the step up to Atlantic possibly next year if you can find the funding. Underneath the arch one more time. Really narrow section of track down through there. And back up onto this straight. It's hard to look at a curve and call it a straight. Well, it's very reminiscent of the bat straight at most port. Very much ready straight. Really is straight at all. These two fellas are Coiled in a pretty good battle right now. They are running good, quick lap times. They are about five seconds ahead of the car running in seventh place, which is the number 43 car of the Seattle. A little power slide by Roman's cars. He comes off that 180 here. Follows Trevor out of the front straight here. Siebert hit one in Halifax. Wilden in his see part of the crowd here today in the background. The people are just, it is beyond explanation. You have to visit this city. Oh. Well, they're passionate about racing, oh. knowledgeable as any in North America or the world about racing. What, what the current points standings are in the championship. I bet they'll know. They'll know, and they've seen quite the race. They've seen a lot of dramatics today. I mean, they, we saw them cheering when Jack Villeneuve Sr. took the lead, getting by Fossetta. Yeah. And then they've seen, you know, the
the son of a legend, Jack Jr. Taken out by a teammate. That's both, right. both partly to blame. I mean, it's, it's had a race so far, Bill, with a lot of drama, a lot of stories to it. It's in, in one way, it's probably a good thing that it was Jacques' own teammate that took him out because if it was an American or an English-speaking Canadian, they probably had a rope on Somebody that was going to knock their hero out of the race, I don't think he would have lasted very long. But if this man continues on to win the race, there is going to be such an eruption of emotion. Oh, look at this, look at this. David's catching him. He is now shown as being 5.7 seconds behind him. 16 laps to go, as you can see. There is lots and lots of time for David Embryham, making a spectacular charge from dead last. You remember after the pace car, he was the last car in the field. And remember as well, when Larry was talking with the crew chief, Baltimore, about this, you know, he, he, what they did was smart. They always oh, kept yes. in mind where the pace car was. So important. They never lost their place. No, it, it's the value of an experienced crew chief. It's, it's so much more than just preparing a car, than welding the pieces together and doing the right wiring and making sure that it was reliable. It's the knowledge of the track and how to take advantage of situations with pace cars. They have a damaged front wing that seriously detract from the handling. They finally got it fixed. They put David back on the track with an excellent car. They are now giving him the chance that he needed to get back into that position. Racing here in Trois Rivières is a driver's dream, and David Embringham very excited about racing here in Three Rivers. Uh, well, coming to Trois Rivières, it's a very French Canadian focus, and I'd certainly like to be a big part of an upset this weekend. But it's a uh, it's a fun track to be at. The city really supports it, and uh, it's the time here. It's a very important race on the well, it sure is an important race in the schedule for many people. Oh, look at Villeneuve getting ah. sideways. And look at Embryham. The Motormaster car is closing very, very quickly right now. This is additional inspiration. When a driver can see his challenge immediately ahead, after what David has gone through, it tends to uh, it, uh, just inspire you more. All of a sudden, you realize, that's what I have to do, right up there. And when you can see that he's closing on Jacques, gives you an added strength and an added desire to win. Without a doubt, but it has to be controlled. I think he is doing that. We have not seen any signs. And again, look at just beautiful pass. David is so intelligent in these cars. But also Colin Truman, to give him credit, saw him coming, saw he couldn't close. Yes, yes, that was a, a, a cooperative action. David chose sometimes to get a car moving over, and, and if the driver does not have the talent of a David Embryham, because he is unsure, he may or may not take the pass. And as a result, both cars tend to go slowly through the corner. David saw the opening. It was a forceful move. He took advantage of it. 1.96. Here comes Embringham trying to chase down Jack Villeneuve Sr. Well, this could be the story of the year to date. We get a car going from last to first. Now, he's already he's last to second. Oops. A little slide out of that corner there. A little scrubble slowing down. Smoke as well. Right, just off the front brakes. He is hard on the brakes right now, using the throw of work. One is going to be very difficult for David, though. He's going to find out it's a dramatically different story between catching Jacques and passing Jacques. That will be hard. Larry? Well, Pierre Phillips is standing on the pit wall. Two watches in hand. What do you think, Pierre? Uh, he's closing him down pretty strong. Or keep going green. Keep going green. You think you're going to get home all? Oh, okay. I know he'll try. Certainly one thing for sure between the two of them, race driver and crew chief, four laps on this track than anybody else. Yeah, there's no doubt, I think you're right, that, that Jacques Sr. is going to give David Embrickham a lesson in how to hold the lead. We'll find out if Jacques Sr. can do that or Embrickham. Can he win here in Bar here? Still to be answered when we come back. Through 38 laps, Jack Villain of Senior leads David Embringham, Jeff Parker, Trevor Siebert, and Kenny Wilden as we have four Canadians. 
top five. Parker sandwiched in between all the Canadian content here at Water of the Air. Well, it, it is, it's getting more impressive all the time, the number of really good young Canadian drivers out there. And, and, and good young, they still include John Gilman, of course. He isn't quite over there. But the number of people, the Trevor Seaberts, the, the Kenny Weldons that we've talked about so many times, the David Embringham, a lot of teams watch, Trans Am teams watch them, IndyCar teams watch them. There's a lot of talent. And look at how close David oh, is getting. as close as it's ever been. Oh. So let's talk about the strategy of the two drivers. Let's talk about Villeneuve Sr. first and what he has to do to hold on. In Villeneuve's position, I think what he has to do is realize that, yes, David does have perhaps a slightly better car. He is more familiar with it. I'm not necessarily saying a faster car, but a better car because of his familiarity. What Jacques has going in his favor is crowd support. That will give him incentive. He can take the position of going any place in the track he wants. And also, he has got much, much more experience than David Ibrahim. Perhaps use the experience and bait David into a position where David suddenly gets in over his head before he realizes it. All right, for Ibrahim, he has to do what? Not go too quick and pick the spot. Be patient, yes, be patient, and most of all, pick the spot. All he needs is one place. That's it, David, take your time get the safest spot possible, which would be at the end of the long straight. It's relatively smooth there. You can see David locking the brake a little bit over the bumps and through his 180s. Now the other spot is down going into turn one. Here he's closing right on the table. Look at the crew. They can't help it. Here. Come on, David, go for it. Up ahead, Mimo Schiantarelli from Italy, about to be left by Milan of Senior and David Embry. To go. Excuse me, but it, it, it's so very difficult to control your emotions at this point. You can see your goal. It, it, your goal is sitting 10 feet in front of you just to get past. That's all you can think about right now. But control. Now look, David got a real good run out of the straight. This may give him the opportunity to pass. I don't know, it's not going to. Schiaparelli's going to force. I think if he had not been there, that may give him the shot. Look at this. Bill Newton carefully blocks. That's a perfect a little bit enough to make David back up the gas and he get back on it. It just it's a faking game. And there's oh, David! Right inside, right inside, and quickly, David Embringham is your new leader here watch, in Water of the Air. The crowd, watch the crowd, look at the crew. They're going crazy. And you can even hear the crowd. This is magnificent. Here is an obviously partisan French Canadian crowd. They are cheering for David Embringham. They're appreciating his brilliance in the car. That is marvelous. But interesting because it was almost, it happened so quickly, you thought something was wrong. Spectacular, a decisive move, just what he had to do. He got up to Jacques so quickly and took advantage of the situation. Here's a replay. You can see David just slots out from behind Jacques. Jacques isn't even looking at his mirrors at this point. He's assuming that he can get under breaking so late, not a prayer. And David, in a flash, is through. You can see Jacques, he was surprised. Any 
idea what was going on, or we like the rest of us, as the field came on and the guys were missing. Yeah, um, at first there was a pretty sinking feeling, but to be honest with you, the people that are involved with us in the points run for the championship were also in the back with us, so it wasn't as bad as it appeared to be. Well, Victor, let's see. About four or five minutes, about time to head toward victory lane. Well, he looks very much in control right now. Jacques Villeneuve Sr. continues to run third. Minos Caparella, as you see, is now a lap down. Just five cars remain on the lead lap. And Embringham has pulled out to a two and a half second lead over Jacques Villeneuve Sr. And, and I think right now, David Embringham is a lot more in control than Victor Sippen is. I'll bet you Victor's heartbeat is double what David's is right now. You see Greg Koopman's just ahead of Embringham. Koopman's from Beaconsfield, Quebec, a former 1600 driver in Canada. Firehawk series also looking at the investment of trying to get accustomed to Atlantic racing and make a full-time commitment next season. And a nice courteous move by Putin's got out of the way of entering him. He paid attention to his mirrors, saw the car coming up, did not want to get in the way at all, and just got out for David to go by. Kenny Wilbert goes by, number 09 and 07 is Kenny Wilden. Siebert in fourth and Wilden in fifth place, respectively. Both drivers having really good runs there. This is, this is nice for both teams. Wilden's team, of course, had that very strong third place finish in New Hampshire. Yes. That was Trevor doing one of his uh, Halifax imitations. Yeah. Uh, Steve Kinsler, uh, dirt track modified yeah. driving. Well, as we say, this track very reminiscent of Halifax. suddenly become very, very competitive again because the, the aerodynamics do not play such an important part. Really, on, on the straight, where these cars are running 130 miles an hour, the only place where the aero comes into effect is under braking. And if you've got the aerodynamics forcing the car down to the gravel floor, you can be that much harder on the brakes. And I feel very good for this man. This is 38-year-old Jeff Parker from Hesperia, California, in his third season of racing. We had a chance to talk to him in New Hampshire. Interesting as well, Billy, as a race driver, and if you're learning, you tuck that away and say, all right, next time when I'm feeling that pressure, I'm maybe or hopefully not going to do that again. Yeah, although there have been some drivers that are still around who get really rattled by pressure. I won't, won't name names, but there, there were certain drivers in the Porsche series that if you passed, you knew they were instantly out of the picture because they just they got rattled. They would lose all self-confidence and slow down quite dramatically. being a racing driver, you have to learn to concentrate, to just put everything out of your mind and do the best job possible. Kevin Baltimore, the crew chief for this Motomaster car of David Impringham. His lead now up to five and a half seconds with two left to go here in front of me. And they're going to be praying. We, we all remember what happened at Halifax. Just the ultimate nightmare came true for David Impringham. If David stays in this position for two more laps, you're going to see some Moto Master tears of joy. This Jack Villeneuve Sr. continues to run in second place. And his three-year-old Swift, what a remarkable job he did, buddy. With all respect, the car showed its age and maybe got just a little tired in the last ten laps. Yeah, and I think, I think Jack himself got a little bit tired as well. We saw him qualify 10. We really thought he would be higher up. So maybe the rust is telling a little bit. The emotion of the day, that overcame a lot in those opening laps. But at this point, he seems to be slowing just a touch and maybe is willing to settle for second. 
realizing it's, it's a lot better than taking a good safe second place and a nice payday rather than risk throwing it all the way against the wall. David, you've got one more left. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Players Limited and TSN and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the promotion agency. Congratulations to David Empringham as he wins his first ever Atlantic race. He's with Larry. David Eppingham and Sheko Vilnov, one and two. You couldn't have two happier guys in victory lane, two people that this race probably meant as much to as anybody. Yeah, Jacques Vilnov, he'll be around. He's got some other years, but David, this was a long one in coming. This must feel just terrific. Oh, it sure does, you know. Jacques Vilnov Sr. has been uh, one of my idols for a long time, and I've certainly watched him and idolized him here, and to beat him here is a big accomplishment. And, a big accomplishment for Motomaster products. We finally got the place we deserve. David, and the win was just spectacular. No backing into this one. You had to work very hard to get there. Well, I, I think on the start, Jacques, Claude, and I felt like uh, about as stupid as you can feel. And I guess I was fortunate that all three of us did the same bad mistake. And, and uh, some more of my fortune was those two battling it out. But uh, I tried to stay smooth. It was one slippery track, I'll tell you. 
David, we also and by going from last to first, David Empringham is the Yokohama Yokomotion. Now you've got control award winner here in Trois Rivières. And David Empringham picking up the 20 points now takes over the points lead again at 134. Followed by Claude Bourbonnet, who gets three, 118, and Jacques Villeneuve, two at 117. Followed by Trevor Siebert and Jeff Barker. The Players Limited Toyota Atlantic Championship is brought to you in part by Yokohama Performance Radios. Like and follow for more.